This video is about how to apply for your SIV visa. The SIV is a special immigrant visa and available for people who worked for the United States or with a related organization. For people who worked by or on behalf of the U.S. government in Afghanistan, or for people who worked with the International Security Assistance Force, or ISAF, or a successor mission in a capacity that required the applicant to serve as an interpreter or translator for U.S. military personnel while traveling off base with the U.S. military personnel stationed at ISAF or to perform activities for the U.S. military personnel stationed at ISAF. There are two stages when applying for your SIV. The first is the submission to the NVC or the National Visa Center for your Chief of Mission Approval. This application includes an HR letter, a letter of recommendation, a statement of threat, Form DS-157, a copy of your passport or relevant identification, and a list of biographic data. The second step is your USCIS visa application. You should include the Chief of Mission Approval letter received after Step 1, Form I-360, a copy of your passport, a copy of the letter of recommendation, and your I-94 if you are already in the United States. Afghan applicants are exempt from the filing fee for the Form I-360. The HR letter should confirm that you were employed by or on behalf of the U.S. government or by ISAF or a successor mission for at least one year. Afghans employed by an organization under a U.S. grant or cooperative agreement are not eligible for the SIV program. If you are unsure of whether this is the case, please inquire with your HR department before you apply for Chief of Mission approval. Afghans who were employed by contractors or subcontractors to work at ISAF or a successor mission do not qualify for the SIV program. The letter of recommendation should be completed by your supervisor or U.S. citizen personnel who had supervisory authority. They should make sure to be specific to each applicant and make sure that the name and relevant dates in the application are correct. You should also include a statement of threat, which you must write, sign, and date, describing the threats you face as a result of your employment with or on behalf of the U.S. government in Afghanistan. Although statements provided by other parties may be included, you must provide your own statement. Use a lot of detail. You should also complete the DS-157, which is available online. It is this one-page form. You also need to include a list of this biographic data. The first name, last name, other names used, mother's name, nationality, passport number, date of birth, place of birth, gender, marital status, email address and phone number, work, location, and residence. You should also include a copy of your ID, whether that is your Tesquira or a passport or other relevant IDs. Remember, English translations for every document you submit to the NVC should be translated into English. You can also submit copies of your work badges. Once you have all of this together, you can scan it as one PDF and email the list of documents to Afghan SAV application at state.gov. You should list as the subject of the email your name and SIV applicant. For further information on your SIV submission or other questions, please visit this link. Your email to the Department of State should contain your, the principal applicant's name and the application date. Please use an email address that the NVC can respond to for further communication. Once you submit your NVC, you will get an NVC or cable number once you submit your documents. You will eventually get this Chief of Mission Approval Letter. Once you get this letter, which should be within 90 days of your first submission, 
you can move on to step two. This is your submission to USCIS of your visa application. You must complete the Form I-360. There are no filing fees or biometric fees associated with this petition, and you may scan and email your petition with all the required documents to the email address listed on the screen. You can also mail it physically if you would prefer. There are other documents that you should include with this submission. This is the copy of your passport or Tascara or identification, a copy of the letter of recommendation, a copy of the chief of mission approval letter, and your I-94. If you are not sure of your I-94, you can go and retrieve it online. You should search for Get Most Recent I-94 and fill out your info. Your I-94 will look something like this. If you were paroled into the U.S. with a lot of other Afghan refugees, your class of admission will likely say OAS. Once you gather all these documents and finish the form, you can scan the whole file to this email address. Again, make sure to send it from an email address that you can get responses to. If you have already had an approved I-360 and had your interview before you left Afghanistan, you can email your on-base USCIS or DHS representative with your name, date of birth, building number, and other relevant contact information, and they will contact you about getting your green card. If you had an approved I-360 but did not yet have your interview, you can file Form I-485 to move forward with getting your green card. Once you fill out the Form I-485 application to register for permanent residence, you can also submit the Form AR-11, which is on the USCIS website, to update your new address when you get resettled. This QR code leads to the Form I-485 site. The Form I-485 should be completed by each person seeking to adjust their status or to get their green card. If you have further questions about your SIV application, you can visit the NVC with using the QR code on the left. If you have other questions about your immigration status as an Afghan refugee, you can check out other YouTube videos here. Thank you.